All right. For, so this next one, what we're going to do is we're going to look into restoration. And so this is trying to restore areas uh, that have been used and abused. Now, this would be uh, on the right would be a gravel and clay mine. And then we kind of let nature take over. Um, it turns out nature is pretty resilient. It'll come back. You know, nature will win it in the end. If you've ever heard that, that's true to some extent. Uh, but it may take centuries. It may take hundreds and hundreds of years. And that's not what we want to see. So restoration ecologists look to speed the recovery. So you go in, you look at the damage, and you, you want to try to reverse it as much as possible. You want to make it a functioning ecosystem. And so uh, on the right, you can see uh, with some restoration biologists uh, helping out uh, that, that uh, once mine has become what looks like a fairly healthy uh, kind of meadow area with some trees and some water. And so that can be done. The problem are ecosystems that are not infinitely resilient. You can, you can, uh, you can damage them beyond repair. Um, uh, but environmental damage usually is partially reversible. Uh, given enough time and you back off, there's still parts of it there uh, that you might be able to salvage something. So uh, that is the good news. And that's what kind of restoration ecologists um, uh, put in the back of their mind. I just want to let you know that this is actually a very hard thing to do is to try to restore a, a full ecosystem. Um, and so here are some ideas. This is one I wanted to mention, and this is not in the book, but this is actually um, Bolsa Chica. And so I've got different views of this and I've kind of kind of widened out. Um, but here you can see um, uh, this was a picture in 2002 where a lot of this brown stuff here is all oil extraction. And you can see that in 2014, that oil extraction pulled back and they wanted to restore this area here. So this area here is gonna be restored. One of the things, and I don't know if you can really see well, but here you can see some of the starts of this and how it was set up. Um, but this was cut off from the ocean. There was no um, salt water coming in and out through here. Uh, this is all water runoff from the counties and, and down there. So this was not a real functioning estuary. Uh, there is a small little patch of estuary in the front um, but, but this area was completely um, cut off from any salt water. So what they did is they went in there, and this is during some of that construction. You can see uh, the highway there. But they went in, and they, and they actually uh, uh, cut this out and let the water come back in. So a slightly different angle. Uh, but you can see now the water is running back and forth, uh, which actually opened this up um, as a, a true estuary. Uh, and here you can see you're pulling back now um, what they've done with it. And, and you can see the water and now it has, here's the bridge over here, still has this water intake and there's some uh, up here also. So um, this is really starting to become a, a very good estuary. Uh, I was there just before the pandemic. Actually, I was there after the pandemic started uh, with a wife and a friend. We, we kind of walked out there um, masked and and everything during the week. There were people there, but, but it was lower numbers. But anyway, you, it's amazing how, how well it has come back. Um, there is a, an endangered uh, um, rail that's there, and we got to see that. Um, and there are a bunch of terns and, and nesting birds. So it, it, it is, uh, when I heard about it, it was going to happen. Um, I expected uh, uh, it not to be real successful, but they've had uh, um, some great success there. And, and just to give you how hard it is, is here we got, you know, they had to um, kind of redo the bottom. Here you got see these are all um, um, echinodermata. They're all uh, in the CSAR family. These are actually called brittle stars. And you can see they're down there. They're actually planting kelp in there. A lot of effort, a lot of money. All right, and then there's a, a couple other ideas I want you to know for rest of this is bioremediation. And what this means is you're using organisms to try to clean up. And so I, um, over here on the left, uh, these pictures down here are um, 
unlined pits filled with uranium containing waste. Uranium is, uh, is not good as a metal. And what they did is uh, days after adding ethanol. So they added ethanol um, and uh, by putting in ethanol, which is an alcohol, uh, has sugar in it, uh, it allowed for bacteria to be added and the, uh, the bacteria starts breaking it down. So these um, waste from uranium uh, uh, are, are being broken down. So this is one way of bioremediation. Uh, over on the right, this is the, uh, um, the big oil spill um, by um, Chevron Valdez. Uh, and so what you're seeing here is trying to do my re uh, remediation. You got a bunch of people out there trying to clean up the oil. Uh, you see on the left there, they're actually using high pressure uh, steamed water uh, and steam to clean off the rocks. And so these are some of the rocks that they actually had to clean. And you can see now that we are getting uh, lichen on the rocks. We are also getting some of the uh, barnacles and things from the ocean starting to move up. Um, you know, it's, it's taken time, uh, but it's starting to, to recover. So um, trying to uh, find ways of using uh, bacteria and water and other things to, to help. Um, and, and so, yes, this would be uh, the hot water, walk, rinsing out the oil and break it down with some bacteria. And then there's also biological augmentation where you're adding things to help the uh, society. So here what we have uh, is a couple of different ideas. One over on the top right, those are, that's a ladybird beetle, uh, you know, those ladybugs. Um, and the green thing it's eating is actually an aphid. And so um, you can introduce um, ladybird beetles to your garden. You know, this would be an augmentation to, to, to knock down the predators versus using something like pesticides. Uh, down in the bottom picture, um, this is an idea. Um, what you see there, that big, huge tree is actually non native. And, and I, at first, didn't think this was maybe a good idea. Um, but what happens is the primary plants, the, that, that secondary succession, uh, did not happen because the plants wouldn't show up because there was no shade. So to get these uh, forests to grow back, they needed shade. But the problem is the tropical rainforest plants uh, being heavily exposed and the soil being very, very much um, depleted, they weren't, they weren't doing well. So they ended up planting some of these invasive species, or not invasive, but introduced species, uh, which cast shade with the shade allowed for other plants to grow underneath them and then the forest can move back and it turns out what's happening is these introduced species then get crowded out by the native plants and they die which is actually um, a long-term augmentation but it actually is working uh, the one on the left is again we're trying to add something to the soil uh, nitrogen and what you're seeing in the front uh, those are lupin, um, and those are a native plant to California, just not in that area. They planted them in, um, but these actually do um, do well in areas. So they planted it along the riverbed uh, to kind of stabilize it, and they add some nitrogen to the soil uh, to hopefully eventually get the uh, native plants to move in. So, and that will be recordings for this 